In this video, I'm going to be explaining and showing examples of what bypass re-encode when possible is in DaVinci Resolve. And for this particular example, I'm going to be using my Mac Studio Ultra because I will be using the ProRes 422 proxy codec in order to explain what this function is. Okay, so I'm in the timeline now, and the first thing I'm going to do is just to explain what the media is that I'm using here. So it is this clip in the timeline, and it is a 10 minute clip, and this is ProRes 422 proxy. It is also 24 frames per second and it's also 1080p as well. Now what I'm going to do is just go over to the encoder here. Now very importantly, this is the function here that we're interested in. Now for want of a better phrase, I'm gonna call this smart render, okay? Now smart rendering is basically when you do a byte for byte copy of some element that you're transferring from one place to another. It is effectively just like copying a file. So when you do a smart render to a particular video codec, you're not actually doing anything to it other than copying it from one place to another. So it's going to be the exact same file it's exactly the same as just copying a file on your hard drive to another location. So what I'm gonna do, like I say, is refer to this to smart rendering. So right now I have smart rendering switched off. So what I'm gonna do here is to export this clip, but I'm going to export it using the exact same attributes as the source. So that's going to be ProRes 422 proxy. Now what I'm gonna do, let me just give this a name. Okay, so I'm gonna call that transcode because effectively that is what's happening here. So regardless of the fact that it is the exact same codec going to the exact same codec, in this instance, rasterization is actually occurring. So therefore it is a transcode. So let me add this over to the queue here. Now, when I click on render, we're gonna see this file actually get played through in the preview window here. It's gonna do it very fast, but nonetheless, it is still a transcode. So let me just do this. As we can see, there's the file being played through there. And like I say, it is very fast. It is over a thousand frames per second. So despite the fact that this is a transcode, it is very, very fast. So there we go. So that took 14 seconds and that was 10 minutes being transcoded out to the exact same codec parameters, but with a forced transcode. Now, what I'm gonna do here is to switch on, as it were, smart rendering. So I switched that on there. Now, let me just retitle this. Okay, so I've now called this file smart render. Let me just add this to the queue. Now, before I even click on render, what we're gonna see here is that we will not get a preview here in the preview window. And the reason for that is, is because it is not transcoding, so it's not actually playing through the file and like rasterizing or anything like that. So what's gonna happen here, we won't see that preview window move at all. However, we are going to see an even faster frame number up here, but don't forget that frame number is not a transcode. It is literally copying the file in the timeline to an exact same copy of itself now. And the reason why that is, is because it knows that it's ProRes 422 proxy in the timeline. It knows we haven't touched it and made any changes whatsoever. So using this smart render function as it were, we'll just literally make a byte for byte copy of what's in the timeline. So watch this now when I hit render. So as we can see, nothing is moving here in the preview window, but look at the frame rate up here. Okay, that's gonna finish really quick now. Now don't forget, that wasn't actually a transcode frame rate. That was just given as an indication of like how quickly it was moving that file from one place to another. Now what I'm gonna do here, just to show you that this is exactly the same file. What we've got here, this is the file that's in the timeline, okay? So let me go and get the information for this. And then there's our transcode file and there's our smart render file. 
Now, if I open the, uh, the information for the transcoded file, if we have a look here, these two numbers to do with the file sizes are different numbers. And the reason why is because this file here has been transcoded. Now, let me just get rid of that. However, if I go to the smart render file, let me get the info for that. And as we will see here, the size for both of the files, the original and the smart render are exactly the same. So what this has proven to us is that we have now got a byte for byte exact copy of whatever was in the timeline to what went out of the timeline. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the edit here. Let me just do this. What I'm gonna do is try and do all this in real time without like jump cutting, just so you can see exactly what's going on. So what I'll do here, let me just make some cuts in the timeline here. Hold on, let me just do another one here. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use the resize filter here. So let me just do a dead obvious resize filter. So we've blown into that one there. And then what I'm gonna do is leave this section as is. Now on this section here, in fact, let me just do a quick title here. So if I just throw a title over there, in fact, let me just zoom in a little bit so I can get a handle on the title there. Okay, I've had to zoom in a little bit further so I can get a handle on the title. So what I'm gonna do is put that title over that section or that cut there. So, so far we've done a resize in the timeline there. This part of the timeline hasn't been touched. This part of the timeline now has a title in it. And I will leave this part of the timeline as is as well. And then this part of the timeline, I'll put another resize in. So let me just do that. So as we can see there, a resize has occurred. Now, if you go back to the encoder or the exporter, if I just quickly have a little look through here, as we can see, there's a resize. That is not being touched for that cut there. That cut there has got a title over it. That cut there hasn't been touched. This cut here has got a resize applied to it, and then this cut here has got nothing done to it. Now, what's gonna happen when I export this now, what we are going to see is we will see movement in the preview window for anywhere where there's been a change made in the timeline, okay? But anywhere where it hits a part of the timeline that hasn't been changed, we will then not see anything move here because it will smart render that particular part of the timeline. So basically what's gonna happen here, it's gonna re-rasterize any elements of the timeline that needs it because either it's been altered with its geometry as in like these little blow-ins and stuff, or we've added something like a title. So let me just do this. I'll call this smart render part it's partly smart rendered so i'll just add that over to the queue here so once again we will see elements moving in the preview and then it'll go like steady and blank as it were and that's because it's going to hit a part of the timeline which doesn't need any kind of transcoding so watch this so movement is happening there now it's going to just skip past this bit there we go so it's held steady then it's going to do a retranscode here because it's rasterizing then it's gonna just skip past that, then it's gonna re-rasterize there, and then it's gonna stick like blank there, as it were, and then it's gonna get to the end. Right, I'm sorry there, because it's, it's happened a lot faster than what I could talk and explain what was going on there. But nonetheless, I think you've understood exactly what's happened there. Where there's been any changes in the timeline which needed rasterizing, then a transcode has to occur, even though we've got it as smart render, as it were, selected. But anywhere where there was no changes whatsoever, and the codec on the timeline is exactly the same as the codec exiting, in this instance it's ProRes, then that doesn't have any changes applied to it in any way whatsoever. Okay, so hopefully then, this video has been useful to some people to explain what the function of bypass re-encode when possible is all about. And I know I was referring to this as smart rendering. It's just that that's a lot easier to say than bypass re-encode when possible. Anyways, as far as like other codecs are concerned with inside Resolve and stuff, 
Um, I'm not entirely sure which ones can do that. And the reason for that is, is because I'm still like a noob as far as Resolve is concerned. However, I do have a lot of experience with other NLEs and stuff. And that particular function is actually something which is quite common on a lot of like, you know, other NLEs and with a lot of different codecs as well. It is also something that you can do between inter and intra frame codecs as well. So it's not just tied down to the likes of say ProRes and such, you can actually do this with the likes of H.264 and H.265. And in certain instances as well, what you can actually do is apply that particular function and any section of the timeline, as it were, say H.265, if you export it out and your target is a higher bit rate, if you don't want to have part of the timeline expand its bitrate because you were already happy with the quality of what it was and you don't want to have a transcode, you can actually have that go into another export where it doesn't increase the bitrate. However, other parts of the timeline where you have made destructive like edits and destructive elements and you would want to apply a higher bitrate, that could have that applied to it. Once again, I'm not entirely sure to what extent you can do this in Resolve because again, I'm still a noob and all the rest of it, I'm still learning it. But yeah, it's something that you might want to look into. And I would suggest that maybe the main reason why you would want to do this is because there are certain instances where you've got something in the timeline and you don't need to change it. You just want to take it out wholesale because you were perfectly happy with what it was in the first place. But of course, you can't do this if you've got titles or any elements of the timeline that would need like re-rasterizing and stuff like that. Anyways, there we have it then. I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.